Let me just show you like some general methodology that I would be using. So, I guess I can show you everything. So, the exit out of all of this. So the way that I got the shell is the same as last one. <clears throat> Although this time I created a tiny PHTML instead of a PHP 5, as I thought this would work as well. And it did. And there we go. There we got a new shell. So what I will be doing is to stabilize the shell. I always do this when I grab the shell. So the rest. Then we find out how many Rows and columns there are. So let's see. We see 74 rows and 104, 54 columns. And then when I do this, now I can control L to clear screen. And now when I press control C, uh, everything works fine. So this is a pretty stable shell. That's good. Um, and for color, there's a little trick as well uh, that not many people know of, but there you go. So what do we do from here? Uh, one of the first things that I would be doing is limp piece, although I would probably do like some basic things like here, like, okay, we're running WW data and we're in a stat group and cool, nothing particularly interesting. You could also do some basic things like just seeing, um, which type of users are here. So it seems like IT guy is a user and, uh, this as well and root so just noteworthy and another thing that I would be doing from here is just sudo well seeing which programs can run with sudo permissions and it seems like there is a Perl script that can so so yeah before I mess with this though this is most likely the way to root let me just show you what I would do, okay? And then let's see if this one works fine. Let's just say that I don't. So then we run this. This one checks a few, um, a few things. It's pretty handy to run. I, I recommend enumeration scripts in general. Like, here's some ones that I like. Usually the ones that I like the most is, to be honest, they can all be handy, but I always use uh, LinPs because LinPs does things like run this as well, pretty much. But if you're really struggling, then there's no reason not to run more of them to this team. And <laughs> it's also handy to have some manual stuff as well. Now, pretty much all of this, not all of this, but most of this will be automated. Like, PSPy is like a, a tool you would have to use um, if you want to spy on some uh, processes. That uh, is not possible without that tool, but pretty much anything else would be completely fine. So let's see what this tool is finding. It's a good tool. I do quite like it. Um, The other users with shell, we confirmed this earlier when we ran the Etsy password and checked for two other users. This one is most likely the way that we are going to privisk. So, yeah, and it, it notes it here as well, the, the relevant one. Uncommon set UID binaries. Yeah, so this one is an uncommon one. Mm. Unsure if there's a way to exploit it. 
I did react to it earlier, but I doubt that it's exploitable, but it might be. ETH low bends. Think it's a Tayo? No. But this uh, site is a must. Ah, uh, it's not to get the blood I am. Yeah. Doesn't seem like that site has it at least, so most likely not. Useful binaries, yeah. One binary that's useful is GCC. This one we are aware of. List file with capabilities. Capabilities can also be a prevesc. Crown jobs can also be a prevesc. So this one just checks a lot, but you have to kind of know yourself what is useful. Crown jobs you should always check for. You should always check for <clears throat> the SUID binaries. You can pretty much run that with with this. Mm. Capabilities can also be useful. It's less common that this will leave with Prevesk, but it definitely can, so it's well worth to check. This is handy to see which version you're running against, like is it 32-bit? Um, is it a old OS that you can find kernel exploits for? Etc. There's there's a lot of kernel exploits that has been relevant over the years. Hmm. And if you've never done kernel exploit before, it sounds advanced, but it's really one of the simpler things. When you just grab a script from GitHub that matches a version, and you pretty much just dot slash it, and uh, you either get root or you don't, <laughs> more or less. All right, so let's just uh, do the thing that I think is the most likely, though. So we can run Perl as sudo on this particular binary. So let's see which binary this actually is. And uh, let's see. So the IT guy. So it seems that we can execute this one, but we can't modify it. It's in by the user and the group root. All right. So my user www.data can run uh, backup the Perl using Perl as root, and that script executes. Um, uh, a script called copy sh. So the the next thing to do is to see what copy sh does. So it runs a reverse shell for whatever reason. And let's see. Okay, so this is a dumb this is a dumb prevesc. So the user root can read and write. The group root can read. And anyone else can read, write, and execute. So, well, that is a bit silly. <laughs> Let's try this. And 
There we go. I am now root. Because this script um, is essentially getting executed with root since I'm running Pseudo. And then because of that, I now get a shell as root instead of just a shell as www.data. So if I say id, I am root. I can seed it to root. And there we go. I can get the root take theme. So that is some of the basics. Now there's many variations, of course. Um, I would say this privilege was pretty simple. It's a, it's a bit silly and unrealistic, but it proves some concepts nevertheless. And uh, yeah, I will be making a few more videos on this, but, but again, watch the advanced guides. That pretty much takes you through everything you need to know and especially go through the especially go through the WAP um, for the room style recommended for Privis, both Linux and Windows. And uh, that will help you massively. So thanks for watching. Now, if you enjoy how I teach and you enjoy this video and you want to take the OCP, then what are you doing not being in this course? It's over 15 hours long and it covers everything that you need. If you're only watching the videos on YouTube, you're missing out a lot because it's over 15 hours of content. You will get access to the VIP section on Discord where you can ask me any questions and you can study alongside all the other students in our course right now. You will also get access to this checklist right here, which will cover at least 95% plus of all the attacks and all the techniques that you need to know for every single section. Not only initial access, but AD, pivoting, Linux, and Windows privilege escalation. And the goal for you is to reach proficient or at least basic competence on all of them. That's one of the things. We also have this entire roadmap right here, where there's a bunch of action steps and a bunch of cheat sheets inside all of these hyperlinks that I can't show you in this video. But once you've completed all of them, you know for a fact that you will be ready to get into the OCP exams and absolutely crush it. If that sounds interesting to you, to get all of this in 15 hour plus of <laughs> video footage from someone who has OCP, who explains different attacks and techniques and methodologies, it's going to be invaluable to you. Now, some people are confused what they offer. If you're interested in the notes, these are the notes that you will constantly see me use in the videos, right? They're pretty much recommended to go hand in hand with the course, and I use them constantly in the course itself, right? So I think you'll find it extremely useful. That's also why we have the third offer, which is the bundle, where you can buy both of these together for a discount. I hope that clarifies things. Best of luck on your OCP journey. I really hope this will be massively useful to you. I'll see you in the next video.